in this section we'll be focusing on Cisco Express forwarding method of switching the packets. Now what is exactly SIF? As the name itself it says Cisco Express forwarding means it's a Cisco proprietary method of forwarding the packets. Now normally if you take an example and there were any packet let's say there is a network called 192.168.1.network network want to communicate with some other network let's say 192.168.2.network. network now whenever this is my source address and this is my destination address so by default whenever a PC realizes that the destination is on a different subnet it's going to forward the packet to the gateway now the router's job is to find the destination network ID so it is going to verify the routing table it says show IP route and it will ensure that there is a a destination network ID present in the routing table and based on that if it is present then it will for see what is the next stop address and based on that next stop address again it is going to forward uh, via specific exit interface and then finally it is going to forward the packet this is our traditional layer 3 lookup which generally happens uh, in our routers or if you are doing any routing process this is the default process now this CEPH is something an advance to this process. So CEPH is going to ensure that this process can happen much faster than a default process. Let's try to see what are the different types of methods first before we get into the CEPH concept. Now before CEPH we have some two initial methods which was generally used to forward your packets. The first one is uh, process switching. Now in case of process switching whenever any packet enters the router so router is going to do some layer 3 lookup which is a more like a software based it's going to check the destination network ID and then it is going to check the next hop IP address and then it will see what is the exit interface for that next hop IP address and then finally it is going to forward the packet now similar way if any, any other packet comes again the same process happens one more time so which means every time whenever any packet comes even if it is for the same destination so it is still going to do the lookup that is something what happens in case of process switching it requires a CPU the router CPU has to be personally involved in each and every forwarding decision so which means in each and every packet entering the router it is going to do the layer 3 lookup and forward the packet now in this way it is going to add some more overhead on the router or a multi layer switches we can say so whatever routing process now then came we have something called fast switching method now in case of fast switching method what it is going to do is it is going to do the same job what uh, generally process switching is going to do like whenever any packet comes it is going to see the destination network ID and then see the next stop IP address and then what is the exit interface and then forward the packet and after that it is going to cache this information in the router cache it's going to maintain that information in the cache so that if any other user want to go for the same destination probably it doesn't need to do the again the routing lookup it will simply catch this information and forward out of this specific interface so now in this the main advantage we get here is we we are a little bit reducing the processing utilization here by not looking up uh, each and every time whenever a packet comes it's not going to look up every time so if the entry is present in the cache it is going to use that cache information and in case if there is no entry in that cache probably it is going to use the normal layer 3 lookup and it is going to cache again so that next time for the same destination if anything comes again it's going to use that cache so now these two methods are no more used we can say now Cisco introduced something called a new method Cisco Express forwarding method now in this method what is going to happen here is before a packet comes into your network before a packet arrives so it is going to already the router is going to maintain one layer 3 routing table now this layer 3 routing table is taken in your hardware so which means this layer 3 table is being downloaded to the hardware and the processing is done at the hardware level rather than doing at the software level so which means the processing is not going to happen in your routing table instead it is going to done on the hardware so generally we have something called data plane control plane I'll get into that a technical terminology now that is the main thing here so when it is doing on the hardware it can provide wide speed of information at the same time this information whatever is downloaded from the routing table it is done on the hardware providing the wide speed at the same time it is proactively doing these things which means before the packet arrives it is proactively downloading that information 
and then keeping that information in your hardware so that the entire packet switches through your hardware and it's going to provide a wide speed performance. So a SIF is something by default enabled in most of the iOS in today's networks. Uh, it's going to optimize the router to make it able to forward the packets much faster than normal. So let's try to get into some more in detail about this SIF, Cisco Express forwarding in most of the layer 3 switches. Uh, we have layer 3 switches as well as the routers we can say. So if I specifically say switches means it, it also applies for the routers here. Now majorly we have two planes here. We have something called control plane and your data plane. So the control plane I can say it's more like a software uh, information which is going to build a routing table we call as RIB routing information based table and based on that routing table now Ceph is going to copy this routing table information is carried into your data plane so now in the data plane you are going to have two uh, tables we have uh, something called FIB forwarding information base and then we have something called adjacency table so I have that in my next slide here now this is your FIB table now this is your layer 3 engine which is your normal uh, control plane and this is your data plane here okay so now this uh, layer control plane is responsible for building the routing information just like a normal router which is going to do and based on that this FIB table is going to have uh, each and every destination network ID and it is built proactively before a packet arrives a router so which means it, let's say if I say 192.168.2. network is the destination network ID and to reach that destination we have a next stop of uh, let's say 10.1.1.1 now this information is maintained in your uh, FIB table the layer 3 forwarding engine here and then it is also going to maintain one more table called adjacency table in that adjacency table it is going to maintain the exit interface information so which means uh, whenever any packet errors for this destination it, it it's not going to do the lookup again so the lookup is pre-built it's going to simply forward the packet out of that exit interface without actually doing the routing lookup without the software processing going on here because it is something pre-built already it's going to forward the exit interface and this is going to provide a wide speed performance and it's going to ensure that your packets travel or moves through your layer 3 device much faster than a normal uh, routing generally now to verify I got I got my four routers which I generally use in all my CCNP routing labs you can see I got four routers connected and all the four routers are already pre configured with your routing protocol if you verify show IP OSP of neighbor I did that already just for this is the basic thing which I did and to verify the safe it's by default enabled in most of the iOS and if you want to verify whether it is enabled or not when you show IP SIF command you can see this is your forwarding information base table where you have a specific network entry for specific networks let's say if I take an example of any one network let's say 12.001 it's going to send via next hop address and what is the exit interface now this is something pre-built and this is done based on your routing table again it is not going to decide any best routes all the best routes whatever is given by the routing table and based on that it is going to maintain that information so that if any packet come for this specific destinations it's going to simply forward the packet out of s1 by 1 interface so it's going to make your uh, switching uh, routing process much faster than normal so if you want to disable generally not recommended we can use something called no ip safe this command is going to disable it and when i disable if i give show ip safe it simply says uh, safe is not running on your router so if you if you whenever you see this information you just need to say ipsf command ipsf command again re-enables that so it's generally not recommended to disable it but uh, when whenever self is enabled it's going to ensure that your fast switching is something happens automatically now even in the switches layer 3 switches also we have the same kind of process there's no much difference now in your layer 3 switches here i take an example i have a source ip a want to send a packet to b now your packet is going between two different VLANs, VLAN 10 to VLAN 20. Now this CEPH is uh, very much useful especially in your layer 2 network switch environment where you want to forward the traffic between the two different VLANs. Probably they are on the same LAN segment but we need to ensure that they, they need to communicate 
uh, much faster than a normal routing. That's the reason we have some multi-layer switches involved here. And, and they send your information at a wide speed and that is possible because of Ceph. Now it's going to forward the packet. Now the switch is going to maintain that layer 3 information, the software information. It, this will be forwarded to your layer 2, that is your hardware with FRB table and also it is going to maintain some adjacency table and based on that it is going to see the destination network ID and then forward the packet to that interface that's how the safe is going to work